Hi, Cheryl. How you doing? Viola, hello. Just a couple minutes. Hey, hey. How you doing? Hi, Cheryl. Hello. Hey, Viola, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Did you log on pretty easily? Oh, yeah, I've been using Zoom for quite a bit. <laughs> pretty handy yeah it's good so just another minute and these calls usually the way they go is people just jump in and out mm We got two to start. Shall we start? It's six thirty. We may as well. Oh, Tammy, hi, Tammy. Doing good, Cheryl. I'm pretty good. How about you? Good. Thanks. Okay. So if anybody has any questions, um, of course, just uh, you can ask whenever. So let me pull this up here. So this is uh, this is a fun one. So this month is uh, bulletproof your low back. This is one of uh, one of the body signals programs that we're doing. And every month we have something different. So I think last month was I think last month was immunity. The month before that was raising healthy children. And um, I should know. I don't know. Next month, I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. But you'll get an email. Well, let's do this here. So we're going to screen share. Can you all see my screen? Yes. OK. Oh, yeah. All right. Can you see me and the the picture here? Yes. Yeah, Very I good. can. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, I hope everybody's staying healthy with this whole virus thing going on. It's something that I'm not going to talk about that at all, as much as I would love to. I'm not going to. We're going to keep it about the actual spine, right? No tangents allowed today. But so this is a big problem. The three of you that are on now know this. I mean, this is one of the biggest reasons why you started chiropractic care. Um, it's something that plagues 80% of people. And uh, at any given time, there's about 35% of people that have back pain. So meaning one out of three people that you uh, that you talk to, your, your family, your friends have some kind of a pain. And a lot of this is preventable. Uh, really, the only ones that do not have a whole lot of hope are the ones that have been seriously damaged either from a major trauma uh you know maybe a really bad accident that tore up some ligaments real bad or that have been damaged surgically which um you know that's that's a big problem now um with failed surgeries i was actually i don't know if you guys know this the first clinic i worked at after i graduated chiropractic school was a post-op clinic so and it was mainly all failed surgeries it's like you talk about hating your job I thought I was going to like love being a chiropractor and I graduate and I see all these people that are in horrible, horrible pain. They're not responding to anything. That's why they went into surgery because they had 
They didn't have very good results with whether it was chiropractic, physical therapy, whatever they did before that. They didn't have good results with injections. Then they had the surgery and the surgery made them worse. And they all said the same thing. I should have never had the surgery. I should just live how I was before. You know, so this is a big problem. But, um, and I'm just, the main reason why I do something like this is to get the word out to people, let them know that this is preventable, but it's something that we have to start taking care of before it starts becoming really problematic and really symptomatic. And it's kind of part of our culture that we don't really do a whole lot until it's really bad, until it's too late, right? Especially men. Men are the worst. Brian's on. Sorry, Brian. But men typically are terrible when it comes to their bodies. They just don't do anything until they're on the floor. And even then, like, just cut it off. It'll grow back. So let's, let's get going here. Okay, so... Um, so these are some of the symptoms that people experience. You've probably had most of these low back pain, tight muscles, loss of range of motion, stiffness, leg pain, swelling, burning, numbness, um, you know, pretty common stuff. You could have some other things, but that's the most common. When you look at the structure of the spine, you see these curves that we have here. There is, um, sorry, in engineering, a lot of engineers talk about the relationship between structure and function, meaning. In order to have good function, you have to have good structure. Makes sense, right? If your wheel alignment is off, one tire wears out quicker than the other. Structure and function. So in the spine, one of the goals of treatment that we do is to restore the natural curves of the spine. The reason why is those curves are shock absorbers, not the discs. A lot of people have a tendency to think that these discs here, can you see my cursor move? Okay. Yes. These discs people think these discs are the shock absorbers. Please say this with me. Discs are not shock absorbers. You discs can say it in your head. Are not shock discs absorbers. are not shock absorbers. Discs are spacers. See these holes here? This is where the nerves exit your spine, where they go to the muscles, all the organs, everything in your body. Those discs provide space. As the discs shrink, the space shrinks. Right. So if this is the hole and the nerves coming through here as the as the hole shrinks because the disc is shrinking, that's when the nerve starts to get pinched or irritated. Not always pinched, but sometimes just irritated. Now, how does that happen? Is it an age thing? Is it because your mom had it? Your dad had it? Why does it happen? Back to basics. Curves. The curves distribute stress off of your spine. So if you have curves. The spine does not take the stress. The spine gets rid of the stress. So it's like a spring, right? Just kind of like in a car. The whole reason why you have shocks in your car is so the frame and all the parts of the car doesn't absorb the stress. The stress gets distributed. When you start losing the curves, and it's very common for us to lose curves, especially when we have desk jobs. We sit all day. We hunch all day. We look at our tablets or our phones all day. So we're losing the curves. We're actually promoting the degeneration of our spine by looking down not looking up have you guys seen that like on my facebook page i post a lot of things about look up america mm -hmm. so that's what it's about it's about like get the curve back in your spine curves back in your spine which prevents degeneration the more you do that the more it becomes your normal so normal does not always mean healthy a lot of people have an unhealthy normal of their spine and that's what leads to degeneration so um We'll talk about how you're going to get these curves back, how you're going to maintain the curves for the rest of your life. And um, even when you're a baby, I guess I can talk about that now. You're not really born with curves. You start to develop these curves as you start crawling and lifting your head. That's when you start molding your spine. Um, and your spine is very soft when you're a baby, of course. One of the worst things you can do for babies is put them in jolly jumpers. I know, like, oh, I did that to my kid. I know, we don't know, right? So uh, their spines are soft, um, but if you could avoid that, if you put them in for a minute or two, it's not the worst thing in the world. You still want to put them in for like an hour while you're folding laundry or something, you know? So, uh, and as you start to develop, that's when the, the curves start to form, they start to mold, they start to harden. And then basically like, depending on how your spine is at about the age of seven or eight, uh, that's what's going to determine the health of your spine for most of the rest of your life. So it's really, really important with kids. And I'm only bringing that up because I think it's super important to have kids check. And if you do know somebody that's doing that, the jolly jumper thing, tell them to, hey, 
probably not a good idea. Call this guy, talk to him, send him an email, look him up, whatever, and I'll, you know, happy to help anyway I can. Okay, curves are important. Discs are spacers. Discs will degenerate with a loss of curvature in your spine. Okay, and some other things. Uh, herniated disc, bulging disc. You guys have heard the term slip disc before, right? Mm -hmm. Discs, discs can't slip. It's just something that people say. Uh, but what really happens here, so on the inside of the spine, you have these fibrous rings. It's called the annulus. And on the inside, this is like a jelly donut. Who likes jelly donuts? <laughs> but when these fibers tear, the jelly I like jelly out. Donuts, man. It's the nerve. And when this jelly hits the nerve, the nerve becomes very, very inflamed because the body actually recognizes your own disc as foreign. Isn't that weird? We don't know why. It just does. So because it's foreign, the body launches a very, very heavy response, and you get a lot of pain, a lot of inflammation. So people go, I don't know what's wrong. Sometimes it's not the severity of the problem, but it's the way the body's responding to what's going on right? Anti-inflammatories can be helpful uh, for a situation like this. It doesn't fix the herniation by any means, but it can help with inflammation. However, so back to curves, right? When you have two segments, so let's say these are two segments, and one disc rocks, for, or one bone rocks forward, it's going to put pressure on the front of the disc. And when you have pressure on the front of the disc, again, like a jelly donut, it comes out the back. What we need to do if somebody has a bulging disc or a herniated disc is not really focused so much on decreasing the inflammation. It's to getting these joints back in alignment because this one is tipped forward with bulging discs. We have to get it back. Sure, adjustments can help, but that's not the only thing. Just the way I'm sitting now, every single disc in my spine is bulging. Kind of crazy. This position causes all of your discs here to bulge because we're putting pressure on the front of the spine. So when you're sitting, it's very important you constantly tell yourself, up, okay? Up, up, up. And it's hard because you forget, right? Posture is unconscious, just like breathing. So you can only really control your posture when you're thinking about it. As soon as somebody asks you what you want for lunch or what you want for breakfast or whatever, it's like you go right back to your comfort zone. Okay, any questions on that about this? Can they heal on their own? Yes, they can. Many people are told that if they have a bulge or a herniation that they need surgery. That is not true. There's no research that, support, uh, that supports that whatsoever. And a lot of people that get surgery done on discs like this, they'll shave the disc, but they don't get rid of the pressure on the front. They just shave this part. So what do you think happens in six to 12 months? Bulges again. And then they got to do another one. Or maybe then they'll say, yeah, you know, we should probably just cut that disc out and fuse it because it's going to happen again. So that's what they do. They'll remove the disc, fuse it, you know, with screws and plates. And um, then you're stuck. You know, most people do not get good outcomes with fusions at all. Uh, matter of fact, five years down the road, most of these people are in the same amount of pain or worse. And that is supported by research. The only time a fusion would ever be required is if you have severe weakness in your legs because there's so much pressure on the nerve roots, it's actually causing you a loose function of your legs or your bowel and your bladder. That sometimes can require surgery, but pain alone does not warrant surgery. Okay, hope that's giving some people a little bit of hope. When they do an injection, a lot of times they'll inject here this is a facet joint of the lumbar spine. There's little tiny nerves that come off this, this large nerve root. They're, I can't even tell you how they're so, so small, but they cause a tremendous amount of pain. But they'll inject you right here, you know, when they're doing their, uh, their epidurals or facet joint injections, rather. Okay, sciatica. Now, most people have this knee-jerk reaction, right? If they have, like, pain down the leg, they go, oh, it's sciatica. Uh, sometimes it is the sciatic nerve is the largest nerve in your body and it's actually made up of multiple levels in your spine. So L2, 3, 4, 5, S1 and S2 all come together and form one gigantic nerve. So when this gets flared up, it's painful. 
But typically, like what most people will have is they'll get pain shoots down the back of the leg, and then it'll usually stop at the knee, and then it'll split. So usually you'll feel it on the side or down your calf. And it can go right to the tip of your toes, but typically it'll stop at the knee. But you have so many different nerves in your spine. And, you know, it could be anything. A lot, you know, it could be an ilioinguinal. It could be, a, you know, genital femoral. You have all these different nerves. So sciatica is painful, but, you know, just because you have pain in your leg doesn't mean it's sciatica. But yeah, pain, numbness, tingling, you know, buttocks, legs, feet. And that is because of those discs going back here. The discs are putting pressure on multiple levels. So if we know that it, this is caused from one bone tilting forward, putting pressure on the front, causing the disc to go back, that must mean that multiple bones in your lumbar spine are tilted forward, putting pressure on multiple discs, and then putting pressure on multiple nerve roots. Does that make sense? So that's a big problem but it's correctable. We just have to tilt those bones back in their position and then the sciatica goes away. Okay, why do we do x-rays? When you look at this, that's a nice curve. Uh, following, I'm not gonna give you like a course in radiology or anything, but following the back of the spine, this is looking at you from the side, you should be able to line up every single bone, nice and clean. When you start to get this kind of thing, see how they're staggered? So this is ligament damage. So I said, which people don't get great results. When you have serious ligament damage here and these bones start shifting forward, that's tough. So this is where, you know, potentially people might have, uh, well, this could get so bad to the point where it'll slide off of the spine. Now, how many times do you think I've seen that? I've been in practice for 11 years now. How many times have I seen a bone slide off of the spine? None. Close. Once. One time. That was surgical. Okay, that's not a chiropractic case. That's surgical. But so with this one, this is minor. So we would call this a, we consider this a grade one. And this, we can actually pull these back, but this would take longer than for somebody like this, that, let's say, that had, you know, a perfect line. Um, this is a disc bulge here. But again, I'm not giving you a course. I just want you to see. One of the things that we look for. The alignment's really important. Structure and function. Any questions so far? Anybody? No? Okay. Funny, I took, I wrote notes down and I haven't even looked at them once. Okay. I don't want to keep it for too long. I said it was going to be 45 minutes. I normally lie about time, but I'm going to try. Okay, so allopathic. Now, this is, this is where I think it gets really good. So when people say, well, what's better, drugs or chiropractic or this or that, right? What's better out of all of these? Is drugs better than physical therapy? Is it better than chiropractic? Is it better than steroids? Is it better than surgery? What's better? Vi? Um, I would go well, therapy. It would need to be therapy and chiropractic. Okay. Brian, what's better? This isn't a test, by the way. <laughs> I would go physical therapy and then heat and bed rest. Cheryl? I'd go with physical therapy. Tammy? Physical therapy and chiropractic. Okay. So you're saying that based on what? The little bit of exercise that I've been doing to help my back and Okay, so what if, can I go back now? What if my spine looked like this, or actually worse than this? What would be best? Probably not physical therapy or chiropractic, right? No, surgery. Yeah, so here's my point. They're all different. They all do different things. They're not, one's not better than the other. It just depends on what's required. So if you say, well, you know, I have a pretty good spine and, or let's say you ask, it depends on the question you ask. What's the safest? Okay, what's the safest? Chiropractic and therapy, for sure. Heat and bed rest, probably even safer, right? What's the next? Well, drugs is a little bit safer than surgery, for sure, right? That's putting a Band-Aid on it if you take uh, drugs. 
Well, sometimes band-aids are good. Sometimes we need band-aids. But the, the point of this is it depends on the question that you ask. So if you say what's better, well, what, you know, what question are you asking? Why is it better? So sometimes when you add them together, like if somebody has intense, intense pain and they can't handle a chiropractic adjustment, sometimes it is important to get them steroid injections to calm the pain down. And that allows us to go in and do our work. So then we can start getting things to move and getting them healthier. Does that make sense? So yes. steroid injections are not better than chiropractic and chiropractic is not better than steroids. They do totally different things. They have totally different goals, but oftentimes when you work together, then it can be really beneficial for the person. So how bad is it? All right. Yeah. So can I bore you with some stats for a little bit? So I said, I already said 80% of people have back pain, 35% of people um, have pain at any given time. The incidence is 34%. So every single year, again, a third of the people have back pain. It's more common in females. Why? Probably because of the angle of your pelvis, wider pelvis. So there's more stress on your hips and uh, again, more stress can cause more problems. Uh, 20, oh, this, you'll like this one. So 31% of men say it affect work. 20% of women say it affect work, which brings me to the conclusion that women are a whole lot tougher than men. Yes, it. Sir. Yeah. Not horses. I know. 50% of women get back pain, back pain while pregnant. The cost, the direct cost in treating back pain is 50 billion a year. Indirectly, it's a hundred billion. Uh, pain is the biggest, it's the biggest health issue in the country, right? So minus, let's say minus the COVID thing, forget about this. What's one of the hottest healthcare topics that you heard about last, the last couple of years? Opioids, opioids, right? Opioids is what? It's a, it's a, they're drugs for pain, but typically people will start on opioids who, you know, their doctor just tells them to take it. They tell them it's safe. It's not anymore, but back then it's safe. It's effective. It's not addictive. You'll be fine. And of course it stops working. And then they end up taking heroin, which leads them down the path of what? Living on the street, going to jail, being homeless, just totally destroying their lives. All cause, a major cause of people ending up doing, who end up doing heroin is from back pain. That's where it starts. So to me, that's nuts because, uh, you know, as a chiropractor, that's one of the main things that we treat. So I'm like, why don't we get more people under chiropractic care? It's even recommended by the CDC. Still, most medical doctors don't do their due diligence. They don't meet chiropractors or develop relationships with them. They don't know anything about it. And even this week, I had a person of this, and this is crazy to me, and I feel like knocking on this guy's door, actually lady's door, but this guy was getting great results with chiropractic care, but he had to get a referral because he had an HMO. So he goes back to see his MD, and he goes, yeah, I need some more visits. I'm doing good. And she goes, listen, you know, you have arthritis in your neck, and if he keeps doing that, he's going to paralyze you. And I go, Really? I've given about 75,000 adjustments since I began my career. Not once have I paralyzed anybody, nor have I heard of anybody getting paralyzed from a chiropractic adjustment ever. And uh, this was the only thing that was helping this guy. He'd done everything else and this was helping him. And she told him he needed to stop and go for pain injections. Mm. I'm like, this is our healthcare system, people. So that's how bad it is. They don't know. Doctors don't know. Doc, medical doctors know medicine. And, you know, that's the that's it. So let's go to the next one here. So DEA approved drug production. There we go. So again, not to bore you with stats, but this is... Uh, you know, the, in, the, the increase of opioids, oxys, hydrocodone. You know, the United States takes over 90% of the world's hydrocodone. I think it's 90, it's 98 or 99% of the world's hydrocodone or 95, over 90. Don't quote me on that one, but it's really, really high, just in the U.S. 
and uh, highly addictive, of course, leads people down the path of heroin. But the increase is crazy. It is coming down a little bit because it is so, you know, heavily uh, uh, scrutinized and criticized by everybody. So they're finally starting to make changes, but it's still bad. Um, it's not where it needs to be at all. Uh, opioid prescriptions per 100 people every year. This was in 2012. So this is an older chart. But in Illinois, 65 to 82 prescriptions per 100 people per year. It's down to, it's under 60 now. So we're doing better in Illinois. The uh, West Virginia is still bad. Alabama's bad. I mean, these states here are bad too still. Oh, you see this. This is 2010, 40 people die a day. This is 2016, 116 people die every day from opioids. Nuts. If you want to talk about like epidemics or pandemics, this is a pandemic. It's the real one. And it's killing a ton of people. You don't really hear a lot about it. Same, same chart, basically just showing the increase heroin with other opioids. You see all these articles now, right? About pain, 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 hospital horror story. There's all these books now, drug dealer, MD. I don't have time to talk to you about this stuff, but you should see the amount of doctors that have gone to jail for, you know, uh, just giving out opioids basically as drug dealers. I mean, working with drug dealers, giving way more than the average person, making millions and millions of dollars and just totally neglecting their patients just because of money. Okay. Surgery. I don't want to scare you. I just want you to see it. Now, there are good surgeons, and I know a couple that I work with when I need them. So I'm not saying I'm anti-surgery, and I'm not saying I don't like surgeons. But they do. They are surgeons, and my best friend in the whole world is a surgeon. And I do, I'm going to quote him. I go, dude, what do you like most about your job? He goes, honestly, I just love cutting people. That's what he said. And he's a good surgeon. He's not a spine surgeon. He's an ophthalmologist. So he cuts their eyes which is really, I don't know how he does that. That's just so gross to me. But surgeons like to do surgery, right? They like cutting. Chiropractors like adjusting. Electricians like doing electrical. So I think, you know, it's important to remember that, that if you see a surgeon, they like to do surgery. So if they give you a surgical opinion, don't be upset about it, right? It depends on, again, like your, what question are you asking? Is this going to help me? If a surgeon looks at something and they think they can cut some stuff up and make you feel better, yeah, they'll tell you, yeah, it's going to help, but it's very invasive. It's not very safe. And it should definitely be, you know, your, your last option. Um, safety and efficacy. That's what we have to always ask. How safe is it? And how, is, how much is going to work? So ask better questions. And this is where, have you ever heard the term paradigm? The paradigm is like a word, basically like how you view your world, right? The lenses that you wear. So it's kind of like if, if somebody is, uh, well, kids are a great, a great example because when it's raining outside, we're like, ah, there's nothing to do. I can't go anywhere. It's miserable. I feel tired. And even this past weekend, it was raining. And my daughter looks outside and she's like, I want to go jump in those puddles, dad. I'm like, okay, let's go do it. And so we were outside and you know what she said? She goes, this is the best day of my life. So that's, the, that's her paradigm. That's how she's viewing her world. And we have to do the same thing with our bodies, right? Like we need to ask better questions. Like um, when people say cost, when it comes to whatever, let's say cost with chiropractic care. It's like, what is the cost for treatment? But what is the cost of not getting fixed? What is the cost of the surgery? But what is the cost of a failed surgery? You know? You could ask this question to your surgeon. May I, inter may I interview 10 of your patients and see what they say? I'll bet you they'll probably all say no. Ask this, what, what are my expected outcomes from this surgery or my chiropractic adjustment? What does the research say? What are my opinions? Is this treating my symptoms or correcting the cause? All right, so this is big. Rather than saying something like, is this gonna get rid of my pain? That's not a great question. Because a lot of things can get rid of pain and not fix a problem, i.e. heroin and opioids, right? Make your problem worse. 
So these are good questions. You have to ask better questions. Um, this one, let's skip that one. That's then we already saw that one. Okay, so symptoms. Back pain, as horrible as it is, is a good thing. How is it a good thing? It's a good thing because your body's telling you that there's a problem. And if all you do is take pills to constantly mask the problem and not try to fix it with something, then, then it's a problem, right? When people say, well, you're masking the symptoms. Yeah, you might need to. Anybody ever been in so much pain where you absolutely needed to take something? I have. And I'm glad it was there when I needed it. But it's not something I do on a regular basis at all. Hardly ever. Um, but we just have to appreciate them, right? So it's like, if it's there, don't ignore it. Because it's going to get worse. Plain and simple. And I'm not saying that you have to get your spine adjusted. That might not be the answer. But maybe strengthening your core. Maybe just getting up and moving more and not sitting eight or 10 hours a day. Right? So we're honoring those symptoms that we have. This wellness continuum, um, you can use this for any condition that you have. So basically like if you are, you know, this is high level of health and this is premature death. And a lot of times you don't feel symptoms until it's too late. Right? So when you start getting really bad back pain, and this is common in our practice, I'll say, what happened? I'll go, oh, I don't know. I was in the shower and I was shaving my legs. And then I, all of a sudden I couldn't stand up straight. It's like, okay, well, do you have any pain before that? No, just the normal pain. Like, what's the normal pain? Oh, you know, just the pain that I have every day, the stuff that doesn't really bother me, but it's there, but it's quiet, right? Sometimes your body whispers and sometimes your body screams. When your body whispers, you need to listen. It's trying to tell you something. So obviously with anything in our life, whether it's like our back or our just overall health in general, we want to try to push closer to this because this is when life is good. This is when we're really, really happy. Down here, it's really hard, right? So this neutral point, no discernible illness or wellness. This is like, there's no symptoms here. You feel nothing, but you're not really, you're not really good. You're just kind of in the middle. Now with your pain. So this, um, this is a nerve. The, this is where pain comes from. So less than 10% of your nerves actually sense pain. M the majority of your nerves control motor, so movement, and the autonomic functions. So we have things like immune system, metabolism, digestion, breathing, blood pressure, heart rate, all these things. That's the main part of the nerve. Pain is right here. It's a very, very small portion. So what is that saying? So if we have a problem with all of this, you won't feel anything, right? And why am I saying that? Because these nerves exit your spine. And when your spine's putting pressure on these, you're gonna have some kind of a health issue. And that's what this is showing right here. So all these nerves that come out of your spine, some go to your muscles, some go to your organs, uh, but you don't normally feel it until it gets really, really bad. The stress response. Um, high blood pressure, heart rate, muscle tone, right? And this is a common one here. People have really tight muscles. So when you are feeling like you have really tight muscles, whether it's in your neck or your lower back, it's because this is being stimulated, the stress response. So when those nerves are being pinched in your spine, it actually stimulates the stress response. It's like, who knew, right? It causes problems with your digestion. That's why people who get adjusted, adjusted oftentimes notice that they're not constipated they don't have diarrhea or whatever it is some kind of digestive problem that they had before uh reproduction sex drive all these different things when your stress response is stimulated it's going to have an effect on overall physiology so treating your spine is not just about getting rid of your back it's about turning off the stress response so your physiology actually works better pretty cool this is just like extra benefit from getting your spine adjusted nobody really knows but um it's the stuff that i get really excited about um Okay, so thor yeah, sources of your stress. Anybody not have stress here? Mm -hmm. We all do, right? It's not about avoiding it so much, especially in this country, it's just learning how to manage it. So when we talk about stress, what are the different stresses? So you have macro trauma, like car accidents, football, right? Shoveling. This is common. I mean, hope hopefully you don't see this for a while, but uh, now a lot of people are doing yard work. 
So the way you bend and the way you twist while you're loaded is going to have an effect on your spine. And that's actually one of the most common ways people will injure themselves is when they bend forward, twist, and then they have a shovel full of whatever, leaves or snow, and that's when they start hurting themselves. That's when you make your spine really vulnerable for injury. So if you can remember one thing that you need to avoid for the rest of your life, it's that motion. Bending, twisting, and loaded with something. And it doesn't have to be 40 pounds that you're loaded with. It could be five. Because typically, you'd be surprised more people hurt themselves with lightweight and heavyweight. Why? Because they don't engage their core. They don't think it's going to cause any stress, so they don't really activate. And people will get hurt really, really, really often from lifting next to nothing. Putting their socks on, very common. Micro trauma, just as bad, maybe worse than macro trauma. Looking down at your phone, sitting for too long, sleeping in a, a bed that's not supportive, sitting on one butt cheek and not the other one, right? When you sit, see, even I, I'm guilty of it too. But you should sit try, uh, symmetrically. So, you know, distribute your weight evenly not doing this if you have a desk job you don't have your computer over here and your keyboard over here right neutral uh and all this stuff builds up over time sitting is the new smoking love that if sitting is the new smoking screens are the new crack iphones and tablets um how many hours do you think most people sit a day eight to ten is average people that sit a lot you know the average person well if you have a desk job um you you will live and i don't want to scare anybody but you will live five years less that research research just showing that now just from the stress that you put on your spine remember that one uh slide about physiology how it totally simulates the stress response so because of that your stress response is being stimulated all day from having a spine that's putting stress on your nervous system, you'll live five years less. So that's pretty scary. So you got to get up and move. And if you haven't seen my YTWLs, I think it is, that I emailed probably about a month ago, let me know and I'll resend it to you. But it's a very simple exercise. If you have a desk job, you will do Y, T, W, and Ls. And when you're doing this, you're just contracting the whole time. So it actually will turn on your back muscles. And when you turn things on, you prevent them from uh, weakening and degenerating. All right? So it's the user loser principle. The more you move, the more you turn the muscles on, the stronger they're going to stay. And when you watch people that are like in their, you know, it doesn't even have to be 70s. I mean, I see people in their 30s that have posture like, you know, they're 80 years old. It's not the result of being a certain age is the result of getting weaker and not strengthening over the course of your life. So having this posture where you just have a uh, slide, you'll see this, but having a, a posture where you just start to like succumb to gravity is not just because you're a certain age. It's because you've neglected your spine, you've neglected strengthening in your posture for decades. Okay, so that's avoidable. The subluxation part of the spine is when the joints in your spine get misaligned. And that's what the adjustment is about. It's about correcting the subluxation so we get pressure off of the nerves, right? So we fix the misalignment. When the, when the joint is subluxated, it'll cause spasm. Is that a bad thing? No, it's a good thing. The spasm is actually trying to stabilize the joints. So when the joints are shifted, it actually causes a weakness and it makes you more vulnerable for injury. So again, right, if, if it's subluxated and the muscles go into spasm and then you see your MD and the MD goes, well, just take these muscle relaxers. It's going to make you feel better. Yeah, it will. But what if you break that spasm and you have joints that are twisted and then you go out and you start raking leaves again? You'll make it worse. And then they go, oh, muscle relaxers not working anymore. Here's something else. Now you need pain injections. That didn't work. Now you need surgery. And that's, that's how it goes, you guys. That's the system. Right? So, again, asking the right questions. Understanding your body appreciating and honoring the symptoms that you have, not loving them because I don't love them either, but just knowing that symptoms are not a bad thing. Symptoms are good. Say that, try to believe it. Symptoms are good. Inflammation, inflammation is your body trying to heal something. Inflammation is not bad. Chronic inflammation long-term means the problem never got fixed and chronic inflammation can lead to degeneration. 
So it's not really the inflammation that's causing it. It's the problem that caused something else that caused the inflammation. So if all we did was take anti-inflammatories, is it fixing the problem? Problem? No. It's getting rid of the inflammation. It's helping with the symptoms, but it's not fixing the problem that's causing the inflammation that's causing the degeneration. Okay. Uh, imbibition. This is when the disc, you need movement for the disc to fill with fluid and nutrition. Uh, and you know this, when you sit for too long, your brain tells you, get up and move. Right, so you get up and you just start doing this. You naturally just know that you need to move. It's part of it's the requirement of your body. So when the joints get stuck, or when you are when you are stuck, when you're just not moving, the the discs are not getting pumped full of fluid or nutrition, and that leads to more degeneration down the road. So one of the most the easiest things you can do that's going to prevent you from having long term back pain is move. Get up and move. Stop sitting. And then the joint fixation, which that's the subluxation. It's the, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just a restriction of the joints. Lack of movement causes more degeneration. Uh, stress response again. And I think I put these in here like a couple times to reinforce it to see if you guys like, you know, is this making sense now? Okay, now I get what he was saying before. I wasn't really listening. My kids were over there screaming and my favorite show was on. I'm trying to listen and... I don't know, but I hope you understand this. All this is a great, a great diagram to show that you do not have to have a lot of pain to have problems with your nerves. All of this can be irritated and inflamed. If this isn't getting touched, then you're not going to feel anything. So things to stop doing, right? I think I mentioned a few. I don't know if you're taking notes. If you are, cool. If not, I can send you this. Uh, things that we need to slow down and things we need to start doing. This is a hard thing. The stopping part, sorry, one second. The stopping part, right? What do we need to stop doing? Sitting, I would say, you know, and try to figure out something that's going to cue you to get up. I know like you can buy these little devices on Amazon. They're like little vibrators that you put on the base of your neck. And whenever it notices a change in movement, it actually vibrates. So it'll tell you like, oh, get up, right? So it, it prevents you from slouching. Maybe putting an alarm on your phone. If you can't remember, putting an alarm on every 45 minutes. Get up. Do your YTWLs. Stretch. Move. Do something. And things you need to start doing. Well, let's look at this. So this, uh, these are just a lot of different postural presentations. You guys are never going to look at people the same way now. You're going to get them all when they, whenever they reopen. You're like, oh, that guy, look at him. Oh, that's bad. This is normal. The ear is above the shoulder, the shoulder is above the hip, the hip's above the knee, the, hip, uh, the knee's above the ankle. Straight line, it's called a plumb line. When the head goes forward, right, that puts stress here. It actually puts stress everywhere in your spine. See the arms rolled forward, more stress here. He has a hyper, this is what we call, uh, what would we call this, like a ghetto booty or something? I guess that could be, you know, whatever. I don't know if you can call that on a guy, but when you, this is called a hyperlordosis. So there's too much curve here. That's gamming the joints of the spine. And typically this is caused from a problem higher up. Um, and this isn't, this isn't very common. This isn't very common at all. This is just a rigid, rigid posture, which usually has some other, other issues. But this is all I want you to see, that this is normal. And this is what we should all try to constantly work towards. Okay. Again, posture is mainly unconscious. When I say that, I mean that you can control posture if you think about it. But if you don't, then you go back to your normal. So how do you get good posture if you don't have good, a good normal? You have to train it every single day. You have to do things that's going to promote good posture, whether it's doing exercises that's going to strengthen you, getting in you know, a regular uh, chiropractic adjustment program, uh, not using pillows that'll push your head right to your chest when you're sleeping. Um, the desk job, getting up, all sorts of things, right? So we constantly have to focus on things that's going to keep us back, ear over shoulder, over hip, knee and ankle. I'm doing pretty good. I'm almost done. Plumb line. So that's what I was showing you here, okay? So you can see this is way off. And that's, who would have thought, right? You can get knee and ankle pain from having a bad back. Um, 
a lot of times with extremity pain, hip, knee, and ankle especially, they don't even have problems with this. There's stress here because of this here. So typically we'll focus on the spine first. And a lot of times that pain clears up on its own. So it's pretty neat. But that's, you know, the, the American model of healthcare is like, I'm hurting here, fix me here. And that's not, that's not the way it works. So, I mean, it, everything works together. Lifting habits. Okay. We've heard this. We've seen it. We oftentimes don't do it because we're just too busy. Okay, so we need to start doing this. You lift with your, what, legs and core. Here, um, you can lift. I know people say you shouldn't lift with your back. You can lift with your back, but you have to lift properly. So when people are deadlifting, it's actually a great, great exercise. But you'll bend over, but you have to engage your hamstrings and your butt, your glutes, and then you can extend. But when you start rolling forward like this guy's doing here, he's not engaging anything. Nothing's engaged. So because of that, that's when the, sp the spine is actually not lifting anything. Uh, but the spine will take the stress, and that's how people will get hurt. Here he's securing his core. Everything is flat and locked down, and he's going to engage his, his quads and his core and his glutes when he's lifting uh, the box. If you need to turn, let's say I'm lifting something, I need to bring it over there. Right, typically we'll bend and we'll just throw it while we're while we're bent over. You need to bend, pick it up, turn your body, and then bring it over here. And I know it takes longer, but you'd be surprised how many people get hurt just not lifting properly. Sleeping habits. Um, neutral is is the key to sleeping. So if you're in a bed that's causing you to sag here, it's gonna put stress on your lower back. And this is funny, right? A lot of times it's not about like doing things. It's about not doing certain things. But when you, when there's too, uh, too much of a sag here, it's going to put more stress on your back and your hips, sometimes even your knees. Uh, so you definitely need to invest in a mattress that's supportive. What brand is the best? I can't tell you because I've had, I've had a few myself. I've loved some, hated some. It all depends on you. Just make sure if you buy a mattress that there's a good warranty so you can take it back if you hate it. But when you buy it, I can tell you that typically you want to go a little bit firmer because it does soften up. Um, she should have a pillow between her legs. That's going to even out her pelvis and flatten out her back. She's a side sleeper. Your neck will affect your lower back. So you don't want a pillow that's too big that's going to push your head up. You want it to be pretty, you know, but the size of the edge of your shoulder to your ear. So this big. So when I'm sleeping, I want this, not this, not this. This person's a back sleeper. You don't want your chest, your, your head to be pushed up. Okay, we want a nice flat pillow. Even a cervical pillow is really, really good. Um, and this is uh, what you see from somebody who's a side sleeper who is sleeping with a pillow that's too small. Okay, it'll jam a lot. Core, 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 core. You don't need to go to a gym. This is great. Right? You can do all this stuff at home. You don't need any equipment whatsoever other than your own body. And um, if you haven't, um, if you haven't had any, if I didn't send you any exercises, let me know. I'll send you five basic ones or more if you want, five to start. And you can do these, you know, for the rest of your life. This will save you a ton of pain, a ton of money, a ton of everything. Uh, you just have to do them. This is, this is torture though. This never gets easy. You know, the guy who set the record for this, at first he was, uh, it was a guy in Naperville and it was like an hour and a half. And then somebody crushed the record doing it for like eight and a half hours. I think he was a Chinese guy, but can you imagine an eight hour plank? Uh, and so, you know, I say you don't need to go to a gym. You don't need weights or anything else. Don't let that fool you because I bet you, even if like one of the guys from the Chicago bears were to do all this stuff, they would have a hard time doing it. The good thing with this is you can, you can make it your own. You'd only do it you know, you can do, you can challenge yourself. If you can't do certain things, we can modify them to make them a lot easier and you just start small. But as long as you start, then over time you start getting stronger and stronger. And that's how you get, uh, that's how you decrease a lot of the pain. And so this three-legged stool is one thing that we discuss a lot in the office, like adjustments and rhythm are great for your spine, breaking the bad habits that I mentioned and exercising to strengthen. There's no secret. It's pretty basic stuff.
right? But if you do all this stuff on a regular basis, no different than like somebody who takes care of their teeth on a regular basis, you will prevent your spine from decaying. You're going to prevent degeneration for the rest of your life. Degeneration is not something that just happens. It's something that we promote. All right. Um, any questions? I did pretty good there. I wanted to do 45 minutes and I did 50. So that's good. Questions, anybody? Mm. All good? Well, oh, if you do, you. you know where to find me. Um, however you need, whatever you need. If you guys want those exercises, if I sent you some and you want new ones, let's do that. I can do that. I have access to thousands of exercise, exercises in that one database. And um, yeah, you're, you know, I think it's good to switch them up every so often just because it keeps challenging your body. Uh, but they're great to do. If you're not doing, especially now, nothing's open. What else do we have to do? Right? Nothing yeah. else. So this is one of the best things about this whole crisis, I think, is it gives us a chance to refocus and focusing on health is uh, definitely should, should be our biggest focus right now. Okay. Hope you guys learned something and uh, look out for the next one. All right. Thanks, All Doc. Right. Thanks, All right. Doc. You're welcome, guys. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you. Welcome.